Focus now on the passing and legacy of Senator Dianne Feinstein, Mark Thiessen, former White House speechwriter, columnist for The Washington Post and Fox News contributor. Um, you know, all morning long, people have been sharing their memories and, and basically, in a way, a lot about American history leading up to her death today. What are your thoughts? Well, she was a towering figure. Uh, she was a, pi a pioneer for women uh, in politics. Uh, she was obviously, as you saw from that clip from, from Susan Collins, beloved by many of her colleagues. Um, and I disagreed with her on a lot of issues. I had a lot of issues where I disagreed. And, you know, today is not a day I'm not going to speak ill of the dead, but I will speak ill of the living. <laughs> and, you know, I watched Chuck Schumer's speech today with a jaw dropped because he recalled in that speech how Repub a conservative Republican senator, a nasty, he called it a nasty Republican senator, treated her in a chauvinistic uh, and, and a way, and condescending way, and how she responded with such grace. It was the Democrats who, in the last months of her life, were trying to drive her out of office. I mean, they, it, this is all forgotten now because in her passing, mm. they've been trying to push her out. For, for, for months now, uh, because she was inconvenient to them, because when she was ill in the hospital, they were having trouble passing uh, passing judges. So Chuck, Chuck Schumer, you know, drove her off of out of her chairmanship of the Judiciary Committee. They would have removed her from the Judiciary Committee uh, if it had not been for the fact that they needed Republicans to agree to replace her uh, as a vote. Um, and they tried to drive her out of the Senate. So, you know, I'm, I, I, if you want to talk about nasty and, and chauvinistic, mm. uh, that's it. That's it. So, you know, I, I hope that today, as they eulogize her, they're having a little bit of regret about how they treated her in her final months of her life, because she is somebody who did so much for the Democratic Party, uh, did so much for women in politics, and uh, the, 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 it, to have a, such an ignominious treatment of her in her final mm. months was, was shameful. Well, what you're also talking about is just the hypocrisy that, that exists yeah. uh, among those leadership still. And, and you talk about, yes, talk ill of the living. Um, that's called current and present criticism, and that is definitely within yeah. the bounds. By the way, reports that Dianne Feinstein took a vote yesterday. So it, yeah. you could broaden that out and say that they were still needing her as they were trying sure. to take her down. Uh, last quick thought on all of this. Gavin Newsom, the California governor, now uh, has the duty of replacing her seat until the election happens in a year, in a year and a couple months now. Um, what does that look like? Because there's so many people vying for that seat anyway. I mean, they, they thought of an exit, you know, imminent. Um, certainly not this way. Certainly not this way. But no, now he's got to fill that seat. Yeah, um, he does have to fill that seat, and there's a problem because, uh, you know, obviously uh, there are a number of Democrats competing for that. It's a close primary, uh, and and so if he picks somebody, he's like he, then he's uh, he's leaning one way or another, unless he appoints some sort of a caretaker who doesn't plan to run. But I don't think there's anybody who's who he would appoint to that seat who wouldn't then want to keep it. All right, and which would give that person an advantage, obviously, if they're competing for it. Obviously, okay, real yeah. quickly, let's get to this. A Fox News alert on the situation at their southern border with Mexico. It gets worse by the hour. We've been showing you these stunning pictures of illegal immigrants pouring into the nation all week and month long. The fiscal year ends tomorrow, and it has done nothing but ramp up to this point. President Biden was in two border states during all that time yesterday as those people were flowing in. He still didn't make a trip to see the crisis firsthand and talk to the people on the front lines. You see them there through the, the barbed and razor wire trying to keep the children protected from what needed to be put up to keep all the illegals out. I mean, they put the kids in there first, so you got to cut through what our, our Border Patrol does to protect the little ones because they have hearts. But boy, what a position to put them in. Someone who actually did make the trip, billionaire CEO Elon Musk. He was in Eagle Pass, Texas, late yesterday with Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez. Musk sharing his take after getting an up-close look. As an immigrant to the United States, I'm extremely pro-immigrant. Um, and I believe that uh, we need a greatly expanded uh, legal immigration system uh, and that we should uh, let anyone in the country who is hardworking and honest and uh, will be a contributor to the United States. And what we're seeing here are, in some cases, some pretty extreme uh, individuals coming through. Sure. Um, obviously, not suggesting everyone is like this, but you're talking about um, 
you know, a guy who came through uh, who had uh, f face tattoos, including tears, yes. uh, had tattooed on his face. Yes. Um, the, the tear, when, when somebody tattoos a tear, it means that they, they have murdered someone. Yeah. Um, and they are so proud of the, having murdered someone. That's exactly right. I mean, these are And this people. person just claimed asylum. Claimed asylum. And we just let them in. We let them in. Did you hear that conversation? Elon Musk yeah. saying his first impressions of all of this included seeing pretty extreme guys with markings to prove to gangs and cartels that they had killed. Again, what is right before our eyes? Who turns away from this? Inside the White House, they do. Some on the left still refusing to admit the border is open. About it, uh, our, our border is secure. And we're in the midst of a humanitarian crisis, and we have to fix a broken system. Wait, and we also need you think it is secure? You think the border is secure, or it is not secure? I believe that we are in the midst of a humanitarian crisis. I believe that she was looking for a talking point. <laughs> that is stunning. I mean, when you say stupid things like that, then people tune you out. When you say the border is secure, you can see with your own eyes uh, that the border is not secure. And by the way, good for Elon Musk for going. And how important what he said was uh, in that video. He is an immigrant. He is living proof that immigrants make this country better. The people who are concerned about Joe Biden's bo disastrous border, open border policies are not anti-immigrant. They're anti-illegal immigrant. There's a big difference. You, we, 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 you know, Ronald Reagan's view of immigration, he said in his farewell address. He, so he always described America as a shining city on a hill. And he said, that city has to have walls, but it should right. also have wide gates to welcome people in uh, through an orderly fashion. And so we need to have walls. We need to protect our country. We need to make sure that the guys with the teardrops on their face proving they killed people aren't getting into this country. Make sure that terrorists, people on terrorist watch lists are not making into this country and getting into this country. And when you fail to secure the border, it reduces support for legal immigration. It reduces support for refugees for people who really need to come to this country, who can make this country better, who are escaping real tyranny, real, real, real threats, not economic migrants who are trying to sneak in. And so we, if we, if those of us like me who believe in, in, in a wide, welcoming, opening country are being undermined by the, by the incompetence of this administration and the lies they tell well, about the situation on the border. And undermined by the people who would kill us and rape and pillage yep. the Amen. cartels. Uh, Mark Thiessen, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.